Thank you very much. Uh, Hi, Nakasa. You're welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. Yeah. I will be leaving now. You are left on stage. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Checkpoint team for having me today. It's my absolute pleasure uh, to be with everyone that's uh, at this conference and share with you some of their thoughts that I've had in thinking about the future of technology and the role of Africa. Uh, so as has been said, I'm Mike Solera, Director of Strategy at AfriLabs, which is a Pan-African network of hubs spread across 47 African countries. So the future of technology concerns all of us. For example, in our companies, I think we're all having conversations about the impact of the fourth industrial revolution. We're talking about AI or perhaps big data. And we're talking about how we expect this future of technology to impact how we live, how we work, and even how we begin to relate to each other. Various reports, for example, talk about agriculture as being our best opportunity to elevate poverty in Africa. And so we'd like to see future technologies that are focused on the agricultural value chains. We'll also see future technologies focusing on manufacture. We've seen from COVID-19 that we have the, pot the potential to totally disrupt the manufacturing space in Africa and build and consume sustainably within the continent. We're increasingly seeing the potential of artificial intelligence and data science as new tools for everything from hiring talent to diagnosis in medicine. Augmented reality and virtual reality have become an acceptable and even exciting way to experience places and products. In fact, we're seeing AR and VR being the new way of, of teaching. We're seeing it in the education space and we're seeing how excited students are to learn. So we know for sure So we're not for sure that the tools exist that will facilitate Africa becoming a powerhouse of technology and innovation. The inclusion, awareness, and resilience built into African products, I feel, is unmatched across the world. But we can't view technology and their role on Africa, for Africa on the basis of tools and their capacity. Instead, we must look at ourselves as Africans, our capacity to embrace such future technology while positioning ourselves and Africa to be the powerhouse that it has the potential to be. So in discussing the future of Africa today, or rather the future of technology and the role of Africa, I want to start by focusing on the success that our African innovators have had, and then looking at some of the challenges that they have experienced or that we've experienced as an African innovation ecosystem. And finally, presenting some factors that we should consider that I feel would enable us as Africans to better leverage the future technology to appreciate or to realize the future um, for Africa. So Africans are building. Our innovators are building. The prospect of what technology can do in the future, it's, it's exciting. From wearable technology to flying cars, Sometimes it feels like our favorite sci-fi movies are becoming reality. But in getting there, we must first acknowledge where we are now. And we're in a great place. African innovators are doing amazing work. They're building life-changing products. Look at some of the people who spoke at this conference yesterday. Look at PADA, who are making it increasingly easy for people to access and use money. Look at Helium Health, who are improving medical records including the way that hospitals run. Look at the bear who are training and finding opportunities for tech talent across Africa. Across the continent, high impact innovators are improving the lives of Africans by building solutions for Africans. In Kenya, for example, look at Sky Garden, opening up markets for small businesses through their e-commerce platform. Look at Aneza, an education tool, using the mobile phone to ensure that students in rural Africa have equal access to quality educational content. Or look at Tanimba, that's innovating the agricultural value chain and ensuring that farmers have access to markets. So our African innovators already have such high impact within the continent. And to think that, that they're just scratching the surface. 
and the ability for them to work optimally is being hampered by fragmented ecosystems, by bad infrastructure, and by growing levels of poverty. What problems are we facing today as Africa? And they're definitely well documented. We read about them every day. According to the World Bank, Africa's population is increasing steadily. And as our population increases, so does the level of poverty. So does the level of Africans living in poverty. In fact, if nothing changes, the World Bank is telling us that the global poverty will become increasingly African rising from 55% in 2015 to 90% in 2030. The United Nations tells us that in Africa, complete eradication of poverty in all its forms is becoming increasingly impossible to reach. IFC describes Africa as having the worst health on average in the world. So our problems are there. We know them. These organizations know them. The world knows them. And sometimes that status quo can feel so helpless. But still, these reports, they go on to talk about what these organizations and their partners can do to begin to improve these statistics. But as Africans, we have the responsibility to own our future and make it the kind of future that allows us to live in prosperity. Well, we have the necessary components of a thriving innovation ecosystem like mission-driven innovators with great academic and research institutions, large corporates, governments, entrepreneurship support organizations, investors. Fragmented ecosystems mean that Africa is not using these resources at its disposal efficiently. Different ecosystem players aren't talking to each other. We aren't leverage, leveraging each other's strengths. We're not surfacing opportunities for each other. We can do better. The responsibility to make Africa rise lies with Africans. It's our role as Africans for Africa to ensure that it has a source of abundant food production, resilient technology, a skilled workforce that we add value to our abundant raw materials and manufactured products. And when we do this, we then become the powerhouse that we want to. And that's the Africa that we want. As human beings, regardless where you are in the world, you want a decent standard of living, don't you? You want clean water to drink, you want food to eat, you want your children to have access to quality education, even basic education. You want infrastructure that works. You want safe spaces to live in. And these are captured in continental frameworks like Africa's, Africa Union's Agenda 2063, these are also captured in global frameworks like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. So they give impetus to these basic human needs that we all have. So as Africans, as human beings, we want an Africa where everyone is guaranteed a decent truth over their heads and money in their pockets to buy food. We want an Africa where whether or not you have clean drinking water is not based on our economic system. We want an Africa where our children do not need to die from preventable diseases. We want an Africa where crops can be harvested and delivered to those people who need them, still fresh, still affordable. We want an Africa where access to quality education is not determined by where on the continent you are or how much money you have. And so the role of Africa, in fact the role of Africans is to make this happen using available tools, especially technology, to make this happen sustainably. The future of Africa is in creating an enabling environment for solution providers to do what they do best. So I feel we need to enable innovators. Let's enable the techies. Let's enable the entrepreneurs. And then let's get out of the way so that they can do what they do there. And this, for me, is done in four ways. We do it through funding those African innovators who are building those solutions for Africa. We do it by increasing opportunities for trade across Africa. 
We do it by redefining the matrix of success. And finally, we do it by using the power of community. So let's talk about access to capital, which has been quite a topic over the last few months. For tech to work at maximum capacity, African innovators need money. It's that simple. They need money. Let's put money in their pockets. Let's back them. Let's back this product. It's important that startups are self-aware to know what steps to take to address their biggest challenges internally and make themselves more attractive to investors. But as startups do risk, funders must learn to take more risks. Funders play a very important role in catalyzing innovation in Africa. There's a silent revolution taking place in Africa, and our African innovators are right at the center of it. As the population of Africa grows, so do the markets. Innovators are solving for the financial sector, they're solving for the health sector, they're solving for education, for food, you name it. Our African innovators are building solutions for those sectors. Spending by African consumers and businesses is set to hit close to $6.7 trillion by 2030. This is just 10 years from now. And our innovators are already building the products and services that those consumers and businesses will want to spend this money on. So there's a business case for getting in early to fund these innovators whose products are set to succeed. With the launch of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, there is great opportunity for industrialization of Africa and scale of businesses. The free trade area will lower trade barriers and will open markets for African businesses. And African innovators are not going to be left behind. As they scale, they're going to ensure exportability of their products and higher productivity of those products so that they're more useful to Africans across the continent. And the free trade area is providing a vehicle for sale that our African innovators will use. So African funders looking for scalable products that will bring good returns to get in now and back these innovators who are building solutions for an Africa that's opening up thanks to this free trade area. Take the example of infrastructure. Again, the challenges of Africa's infrastructure are well documented. According to Africa Development Bank rule, there's been great progress made in this regard. The projections of electrification are crazy. We're starting, we're start, we're right now looking at a rise in the trend to about 70% in 2040, 20 years from now. And so providing access to 800 million more people, that's 800 million more customers for the solutions that African innovators are building now. According to the Africa Development Bank also, at the current trajectory, broadband, broadband coverage in Africa is likely to skyrocket to 99% by 2060. The last 20 years have shown us what Africans can do with connectivity and basic infrastructure improved. So imagine what the next 20 years are going to bring. The promise of improved infrastructure and the trickle-down effect on the kind of solutions innovators will build successfully is another reason for African funders to fund African innovators. Africa's infrastructure is catching up with African innovators, and the result is going to be mind-blowing in vegetable future African technologies. So once our innovators have their capital, let's talk about how we redefine their success. While exits and acquisitions are huge wins, and we want to have more of them, and we want to hear about more of them in Africa, Let's not let this be the major matrix of success. Are the innovators who save lives and feed families not being successful? 
What about those innovators in logistics who move goods and people? And they not enabling economies in Africa, and it is not success. We need to begin to celebrate more of our innovators who are building solutions that are transforming Africa, whether they are elusive unicorns or the numerous others. In redefining our measure of success, we begin to nurture even more innovators who understand the potential of Africa and want to do their best. They want to do their part to help Africa. They want to help Africa realize its dream of prosperity. We grow more innovators who understand the potential of Africa's youth force, who understand the potential that exists in an Africa where great infrastructure, that has great infrastructure. And innovators who want to build that infrastructure or want to innovate for an Africa in which that infrastructure exists. But for me, the most amazing factor for our African innovators to help us take the best advantage of the future of technology is the power of community. The greatest enabler for innovators is through community, immersing themselves in community, being part of the communities that have innovators. We are not a Silicon Valley, and nor do you want to be. We are Africans around the world concerned about the welfare of Africans around the world. Even as we build solutions, as Africans we focus on our humanity. African voices must be heard in conversations on Africa and must be heard in technology that's built for Africans. We hear each other when we are part of a community. We need to embrace the power of community in the way we include each other in conversations, in the way we trade, in the way we work, in the way we build, and in the way we teach. We need for accountability of resources, the need for support for African innovators to ensure they have as much opportunity as other innovators. These are all needs that are easier addressed collectively. Africa does not operate as a collective, and this has been our greatest weakness. At AfriLabs, we are nurturing a Pan-African community of hubs. It's a community where a hub in Egypt will willingly share ideas with a hub in South Africa. It's a community where a hub in Kenya will willingly train entrepreneurs in Ghana. Being part of an AfriLabs community allows us to understand each other's challenges. We can sympathize with each other, we can empathize, and we can also be part of building each other's solutions. Sometimes the solution to a challenge is sitting right next to you, not halfway around the world. In Kenya, for example, the cost of bandwidth for high performance servers was prohibitive, but when we spoke about it in the innovation community, we saw the rise of local and professional cloud hosting African focused data center providers. There needs to be more collaboration across sectors. Government, academic, corporate, investors, we all need to bring our best to the table. We need to talk to each other more. We need to collectively pick the right challenges and match them with the right solutions. If the future of tech is going to be truly beneficial to Africa. We have to take a people first approach to sustainable tech intervention in Africa. Join a community. There's someone there who needs your help, and there's someone there who's building a solution for the challenge that you have. Go back to your high school and talk to the communities there. Go to your university and show them what community they can plug into after school. And if you're stuck and come to Aquila, then we'll help you find a community to plug into. We're currently a network of 225 hubs spread across 47 African countries, and our network is constantly growing. We can even create new communities with you, although so many exist already, including faith-driven investors, trade enthusiasts, developers, policy makers, 
there is an amazing number of communities that you can plug into. So finally, I'd like to invite you to join the AFILAD annual gathering running from 12th to 14th October, where we'll do a deep dive into the need for resilient innovation in Africa and the communities that can make this happen. And you can find more information about that on AFILAD.com. And for that, I'd like to thank you for your time and wish you great deliberations ahead during Tech Point Field. Thank you. Hi, Nekesa. Thank you so much for that message. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. We believe we are all develop, developing the conference, uh, the continent. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the, uh, for the message. Thank, thank you. you. So you can, you can go to the backstage now. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for staying with us. I hope you enjoyed Nekesa's uh, presentation. Thank you. So the next session going up now is on is building products with African design. We have amazing speakers there, and we we are you are going to join me there. But let me just say one thing quickly. Whenever you are the next session, you will see when it's live. You will see the stage. You will see the uh, clip the stage and go to the next session. Join the next session. That's how it happens. For example, this place now, you can exit this place, this stage, and join the next stage. Click stage, join the next stage. That's how it works. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the next stage. Bye.